John, what I want, what I wanted to get move us on to, um, music has moved on to streaming onto platforms, mm. and to some extent, education and learning are moving onto platforms. Mm -hmm. But maybe in ways that people don't don't like or haven't got their heads around. Um, I I sent you a sound file. We can't play it for the listeners at the moment, um, but it will be. Well, we'll tr we'll try and get it on the on the drama show and the wild show tomorrow, when we've got this other computer out of uh, power saving mode, or. We'll put it online somehow, or people can find it as a as a as a tweet. Um, if you look for Will Seven Eight Nine GB on Twitter, I haven't. I'm. If if I if this lot was working, we'd retweet it as we not know W E N O T N O. Um, but the thing is this: that I I I sent a tweet to Stephen Heppel, who has been at bet many times before I think I think we we saw him the one of the ones we went to right and he's he's uh, arranged central features at bet uh, mainly when it was at, at Olympia by the time they got to Excel uh, they had an established reputation they didn't didn't need so many grand events in the in the center of the hall but he wrote and did podcasts and videos during lockdown saying there were some positive aspects to it. He, he thought that there was a lot of experimentation going on in schools, uh, finding ways in which pupils could, could learn at home, ways in which they could be supported, ways in which it could work with schools. So he's, he's definitely in favour of schools and the design of schools, um, the way that furniture and rooms and uh, ventilation. Uh, he's, he's, he's very into oxygen, opening a window. Yeah. So he's, he hasn't given up on the, 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 the actual school. He's just very interested in how the technology works with that and also what happens online. Um, and... The other, th the other thing which is interesting, it, during during lockdown, he was going on about um, an earlier generation whose learning was disrupted during the war. Right. Uh, he thinks that the, the kids who were shipped out of the big cities to avoid the bombs and had to move around and uh, were learning as they went or people would talk to them now and again. Um, okay, a lot of them found it very, very difficult, mm. but he thought that some of them um, having found their way through it, actually were very creative. Which is maybe not a general purpose solution. I, th I think I've explained what his point of view is pretty pretty much. But what is, what is interesting now is that the um, there, is, there is a situation of uh, a sort of a lack of communication between parents and teachers on the question of how important it is for children to be in school. Have you, have you been coming across this? Yeah, I've been coming across this particularly on the news. I mean I mean because they've been saying is it the teachers or the or the or the parents' responsibility to make sure the children go to school. And I've I have heard, I have been hearing it quite a lot on the news. Well, what you're not hearing on the news, I would say is the aspect of what happened during lockdown, what happened to the technology, and how the technology is regarded by parents, uh, by teachers, and by learners. So how is the technology re re regarded by, 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 by them, by, by the teachers, parents, and um, children? Well, well, I'm I'm going to I'm going to make some guesses. Obviously, we'll have a better idea when when we've been to bet and got an idea uh, what people think there. Right. Um, but I would I would say it's not only what's happening in the schools. I think it's also what's happening in the universities. Right. Because very often it's the academics who comment on these things, and their opinions are 
are very influential. And I, I would say, uh, I mean, this is just my my take on it. And and another another at the moment we're a bit stuck. Oh no, you can phone in. Oh one three nine two six nine zero four five zero. We'd welcome phone calls. I I would say, the in the UK, the campus is back to normal. They 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 feel that they had to improvise during the lockdown to go online. Um, but they didn't really like it. They weren't prepared for it. There wasn't much resource for it. And now they can go back to a model where um, the lecture is the, is the main focus. Right. I, I, it's, not, it's not the only thing that's going on, but I think broadly that's what's going on. Right. And in the, um, in the case of schools, mm. uh, they, they, they definitely don't, don't want anything other than than the, the pupils being on site. Right. So the idea that the, the parents are going to study archaeology in Crete for a fortnight, when the rates for hotels are low, <laughs> as it happens, that doesn't make any sense to them. Right. Um, they don't want that sort of thing going on. The the the. The parents, I think, are, are, are get, are, have got used to that, though. I mean, most, most people are using uh, YouTube or various other sources of information to learn about things. Yes, they are. And... Mm. YouTube does hold a, 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 a lot of information, a lot of, uh, you know, things and different topics, so it's a pretty good source. Yeah, so, and I think parents would use YouTube if they were asked to help with homework. Yes. They'd, they'd try and find stuff like that. Mm. Um, the, the pupils, well, you, 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 you might have a better guess than, than me. I mean, a, officially, you can't go on TikTok till you're 13. I know. So, so what do you think is going on, <laughs> John? Well, make a guess. People are lying about their ages. You reckon? Well... If you can't go on, if you officially can't go on TikTok, um, uh, to your 13, the parents may may be making up the accounts for their children, or the the only the only other answer is that the uh, children or teenagers are li children are lying about their ages. Well, that's a possibility. This is the We Don't Know show. We have no well, firm information. What is... That's the only logical... That's the only logical answer. Because if you're... If you've got... If you're only... If you're only uh, 12 and you try and um, sign up for TikTok under your under your um, own date of birth, then it, it, the algorithm... Pick, the, al the algorithm picks up on picks up that you're only 12 it's not gonna let you on there is it no so that's the only that's the only logical the se the sensible answer that that's happening right but um well we'll come back i think we should play place play another another chat but we we'll, we'll, we'll come come back to this um I don't whether, whether, whether 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 anybody's learning anything from I do, this, or whether you can describe it as learning. I do feel that children are often are often um, are often introduced to social media way too early in their age. Okay, so when what age do you think they should learn so, some social media? I think social media is is damaging. I I I, I think I think. That 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 I think I think social media is damaging and harmful to 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 children. I I I don't think they should at least go on there until they're fourteen, fifteen. So should they be watching YouTube, or should parents be selecting if, items that they might watch? I think parents should. This is my own view, and and you may agree, you may not. But I think parents should should be should be uh, 
way more computer savvy, savvy than they are. They should have parental controls, and they and uh, YouTube YouTube should f um, should should filter out harmful content that um, that they may that they may have on there for, for adults. Uh, yeah, well, they do try and do that. Yeah, they do try and do that, yes. But I'm saying the 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 uh, the, the, the uh, ultimate responsibility relies with uh, lies with the parents, and uh, I think I think there should be free courses to parents that aren't computer sav savvy to become more computer savvy, as they say. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that that, that, that makes sense. I think. Um so I j just just quickly we I, th I feel we should play another another track but what Stephen Heppel was saying on, on um because he d he did come back through through Twitter he 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 attached a PDF of an opinion piece sh a sm short column that he'd written uh which relates to all of this um in which he he says he thinks he thinks there are a significant number of of uh school age learners who will turn up to school but then object to the way it's arranged at the moment and want to learn using technology and um, he's encouraged that with a group I think in Spain uh, who redesigned their school using YouTube to explain what they were proposing getting feedback from um, I think they might have used video conferencing as well um, they used the feedback that they were getting from from all the, all the people watching them on on YouTube as part of the design process, and they're quite quite happy with the way it's gone in the school. And he's he's he claims that this is um, better than you'd get from talking to consultants or using focus groups. He he thinks if you get the voice of the of the learner, very central to the design process. Am I getting a bit, you know, I'm getting a bit jargony now. But I'll go ahead of you. Um, we'll, we'll play, we'll play a, a sound thing because I did, I did read it out because I know John's not going to, going to read text very easily or at all, at all in some cases. Mm. So I, I did, I did. I, there is a sound clip which exists, and we will get that. Um, onto Twitter <laughs> fairly soon or we'll get it on on uh, Phonic FM during the Wild Show tomorrow. <laughs> 